Shalom, this is Quay. We are continuing our look at chapter 9 of the book of Revelation. I think this is the fourth session in this particular chapter. And um, thank you, Lord, for your, your presence with us. Thank you for the anointing to speak your word. Thank you for the anointing to hear your word. Thank you, thank you for a heart to take heed and to obey your word. Amen. So uh, it's the fifth angel who has trumpeted. Uh, a key was given to a particular angelic entity to unlock the abyss, the lowest place, uh, Tartarus, um, uh, the, the, the abyss, uh, the lowest hell where fallen angels had been incarcerated. The fallen angels are released they are given uh, very clear boundaries. They are not allowed to harm the uh, plant life that's left on the earth. Remember, there's already been some, uh, some, some trumpets and, and some upheaval on the earth. So uh, things aren't in real, real good shape when this starts. But uh, obviously, there's still some grass. There's still some trees and uh, they're not allowed to harm those. They're not allowed to harm any of the people that have the seal of God on their forehead. God is making distinction. We've told, said before that uh, God will make Goshen's for his people who are on the earth. Uh, as long as we are on the earth, while his righteous judgments are coming forth, we will be, um, we will be made, a dis there will be a distinction will be made. Uh, for us. And um, we spoke about that God would still grant, uh, he would receive and he would, uh, he would graciously hear those who would repent. He, he would take them, even at this late point, into his kingdom of light. He would transfer them out of darkness into light. We made parallels with the book of Joel and the, uh, the repentance that uh, God uh, called for at that time and, and how he, he desired, he actually desired to relent of the calamity that, that he was bringing. And so today we're going to make some more comparisons between uh, this particular invasion of so-called locusts, which actually aren't locusts at all. Uh, it is a, a band of fallen angels. Uh, and uh, we're going to compare with uh, how, uh, what this says to how Joel wrote, understanding that many of the prophets, Joel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, we, we could probably actually literally name all of them. And many of them spoke of localized, uh, closer in uh, judgments and, and things that would happen, but uh, almost, I would say 99.9, .9, if not 100% of the time, there's usually a, also a, a, a later fulfillment. It's, it was also giving details and understandings about these final judgments. And we do find that in the book of Joel. It, there was a, a, a close in, a, a localized thing. Uh, we find, uh, we spoke very briefly last week that we can find in that uh, a, an aspect of it that is appropriate for what, what we are dealing with in our country at this time and, and God's call for repentance. Um, and then uh, correlating these things with chapter nine. We're gonna talk about what this uh, locust army looks like. Let me read it to you from the uh, Re book of Revelation. And so uh, we're starting in verse seven now. I'm gonna read from verses seven through 10 is what we'll look at in this session. Now the appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were something like crowns of gold and their faces were like human faces. 
They had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like those of lions. They had chests like iron breastplates and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many horse-drawn chariots rushing into battle. They have tails like scorpions with stingers and in their tails is their power to harm people for five months. Some uh, very strange looking creatures, would you not say? Now let's go back to the book of Joel and in chapter two, um, praise you, Jesus. Uh, well, I'm just going to start at the beginning of, of that chapter. Blow the shofar in Zion. Remember, there was a shofar blown uh, by the, uh, the fifth angel, blew the trumpet before this happened. This is God's pattern. He sends out a strong warning. Sound an alarm. Let all living in the land tremble. Remember, there was like an eagle that flew in the sky as well before all of this started in chapter nine, giving warning, woe to those who live in the earth. For the day of Adonai is coming. Surely it is near. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness as blackness spreads over the mountains. And uh, what did we find out when the abyss was unlocked and these entities rise out? It says that darkness covers the sky. Uh, and so we see that correlation there. And then um, it says a great and mighty people from antiquity, there was never anything like it nor after it ever again from generation to generation. A fire devours before them and behind them flame blazes up like the garden of Eden is the land before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Nothing at all ever escapes them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, like the clatter of chariots. They gallop like war horses. Uh, they leap over mountains. Before them, people are in anguish. They run like mighty men. They rush on the city. They run on the wall. They climb into houses. The land quakes before them. The sun and the moon become dark and the stars withdraw their brightness. And Adonai utters his voice before his army, for his camp is very vast, for mighty is it that carries out his word. For the great day of Adonai, very terrifying, who can endure it? So in verse 11 here in Joel, where it says uh, Adonai is uttering his voice before his army, some people get very excited and they think that that means that it's the good guys. But we can see in the context here that these are not the good guys, but they are called his army because he is in control. Now, uh, this particular army that is being described here in Joel, uh, as far as a great and mighty people and a fire devouring before them and uh, that everywhere behind them is total desolation. This is actually speaking of an army that is yet to appear in the book of Revelation. It is not speaking about this present army of uh, fallen angels and uh, who are demonically in character and nature uh, because in chapter 9 remember there are limits they can't destroy everything Joel is speaking that after this army goes through everything will be destroyed we will uh, find out more about this army later in the book of Revelation However, we do see a parallel with the appearance being like the appearance of horses. 
and that they gallop like, like war horses. And so uh, we can see that Joel fits in with chapter nine. It will also fit in a little bit later in the book of Revelation. And so uh, horses always represent uh, uh, battle and warfare and conquest in the scriptures. They are also always associated with going from one dimension to another. Sometimes they are attached to chariots and sometimes they are not. But whenever there is something happening where God is uh, overseeing and permitting something to go from one dimension to another, what did Elijah say to Elisha? If you see me, then that means that the Lord has definitely uh, chosen you to uh, take not only take my place, but have a double portion. And he was able to see it. So uh, it's, it's again, it's not that these uh, fallen angels real, necessarily have an appearance like a horse. They may, they may not. Obviously, they're they look kind of hybridish. We don't really know. We're, we're told here they have appearance like, and, and once again, they have an appearance of locusts. Well, then they have an appearance of horses. Well, I believe it's more describing their function. They come in and they function like locusts. Uh, they, they come in and they devour and they, uh, you know, Live, real locusts come in and they, they natural locusts, they devour plants and things like that. But they don't really devour people. Now, these locusts come in and they do devour, but they, they don't devour plants, they devour people. But yet they're limited in what they are devouring. So I believe that is the connection why John is connecting them with locusts. They have a particular assignment to devour and destroy uh, certain things, but not others. And then they have an appearance like horses. Well, they're crossing from dimensions. So uh, this, this dimension, even though it's way under the earth, it's still in a, a locked off dimension at this point, but God is going to allow that, that uh, portal to open and they are gonna come out crossing dimensions like horses and they are ready for warfare. Uh, and so it says uh, on their heads were something like crowns of gold. I don't really know what that means. Uh, perhaps it's, it's uh, you know, a, a, a remaining vestige of what they had before they fell. Uh, and, and whatever it, it looks like on their head. I don't know. But John said it was something like a crown of gold. And their faces were like human faces, uh, whatever that means. We know that uh, these, uh, we believe, and we believe scripture uh, and, and some other very reliable extra biblical uh, historical writings uh, confirm that these are fallen angels that uh, did create Nephilim. They mated with human women. So maybe they, they themselves did not become hybrids, but maybe they look like humans because they interacted in a wrong way with humans or because there's humans that have aligned themselves with them. I don't know, but their faces were like human faces, hair like women's hair, don't know, teeth like those of a lion. Uh, we can find parallels of that in the book of Daniel when he describes the beast uh, system, the beast government, and uh, that it would come and have teeth, uh, sharp teeth like a lion. So uh, again, this is, I believe, more describing their, their character, their essence, the essence of who they are. Uh, and uh, they're, uh, they're, they're covering themselves. They have some, again, is this a vestige of, 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 of some kind of beautiful angelic covering they used to have? Uh, some armor that they had from God and, and now it appears like iron? I don't know. But um, 
At, at any rate, John is describing it as best as he can, but I believe he's describing the function, the character and the function of what they are doing. Uh, they make a tremendous noise that is heard in the earth, that probably just the noise of it. Uh, it sounds like many horsemen and horse-drawn chariots going into war. There's a parallel uh, in the book of Joel with that. And there's also in the book of Naaman, uh, when it's describing final days and uh, the, when, when God is actually bringing forth warfare interdimensional and he's letting it start to play out on the earth. They have tails like scorpions uh, with stingers and in their tails is the power to harm people for five months. Uh, and so once again, not necessarily that they literally have tails, but they may. I don't know, but their tails are like scorpions, which uh, can definitely, uh, you know, they, they, they have a poison in them that uh, is oftentimes fatal. Uh, it is always incredibly painful. We spoke last time, we believe that the torment that will come upon the people is eye for eye, tooth for tooth. It will manifest, I believe it will manifest differently for uh, depending on how, what kind of torment they were dishing out to others. But um, uh, they will have this, this power for five months. So it's limited in amount of time. God would still be open to repentance from these people. And um, uh, I, I believe that uh, we'll, we'll stop there today for this session. We want to pray, Lord, that you will prepare our hearts and help us to prepare the hearts of our children, our grandchildren, uh, Lord, to, uh, to, to, to take seriously, to study seriously what's in this book, to uh, not be surprised, overcome with any kind of fear, deception, be drawn into anything uh, un ungodly, but to, uh, to, rec to realize that uh, you have some righteous judgments coming on very evil entities and that uh, you, you are uh, explaining to us what you're going to do. You said, I don't do anything unless I tell my prophets. And he's made us a prophetic people. So um, uh, may the word of the Lord, even, even this word, uh, just bring life to you and uh, bring a, a new fruitfulness, new uh, resolve to uh, know this great and glorious God that we have. Remember, he's the one we keep our eyes on. We, can, we, we are supposed to look at these things uh, to, to, to know the character, the nature, etc. But we keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the Lamb of God. God bless you.